Hello, sports fans and baseball fans. Got another Stratomatic Baseball Card and Dice game for you. Today, as a, for a change, this game is being played actually outside. I am outside my house in the nice fresh air with the dogs barking and the sun out. And today's matchup is going to be the 1972 Kansas City Royals taking on the 1947 Chicago White Sox. In 1972, the Royals were 76 and 78, and the uh, White Sox of 1947, and we do have a problem with things trying to blow away, and that's going to be an issue. In 1947, the Chicago White Sox were um, 70 and 84, so the teams are somewhat evenly matched, and let me see, yeah, so anyway, the pitching matchup for today will be Dick Drago of the Royals, of the 1972 Royals, and he will be pitching against Frank Papish of the 1947 Chicago White Sox. And I guess I had better probably try to go get something to weight down the, uh, the charts until I need them. All right, well, we're not going to weight them down. We'll just, if they blow off, they blow off. But uh, I don't have anything to weight them down right now. So anyway, the lineup for the visiting Royals of 1972 will be Amos Otis leading off and playing center field. Lou Pinella batting second and playing left. Shinebloom is going to be playing right field and batting third. John Mayberry will be at first base batting cleanup. Uh, Taylor, I think it's Chuck Taylor, will be uh, playing third base. Cookie Rojas will be at second base. Kirk Patrick will be the catcher, Freddie Patek at shortstop, batting eighth, and then the pitcher, Dick Drago, uh, batting ninth. We are using pitcher bat because this is uh, the 1972 team versus the 1947 team, so there was no DH in 1972 or 47, so we will be going that in that direction. And uh, we, we've done the uh, Kansas City lineup, so I will just go ahead and start with them batting against the uh, Chicago pitcher Frank Papish and that is a 2-7 on Amos Otis and that's going to be a ground ball to third base and he is out there's one away Lou Pinella up and that is a 1-9 and that is a ground ball to the shortstop two away very quickly for Papish and that brings up Shinebloom, Richie Shinebloom. And he gets a 2-7, and that is going to be a single. So Shinebloom is aboard with a hit. And uh, John Mayberry is following him. Of course, John Mayberry later to play for the expansion Blue Jays. And that is a 6-9 on Papish's card. It is a single, and so Mayberry also follows with a single. And now there are two runners on and two out. And Carl Taylor, Carl Taylor, not Chuck Taylor. 6-10, Chuck Taylor are a type of sneaker. So uh, that is going to be a fly to center field. And the center fielder for... The uh, uh, White Sox is a two, and that's a seven, and that is an out, I believe. Yeah, so he is out, and the Royals, despite getting a little bit of, uh, you know, of a uh, threat there, come away with nothing. We go to the bottom of the first, and Dave Philly batting against... Dick Drago and the uh, White Sox lineup will be Dave Philly leading off playing center field. Luke Appling will be the shortstop batting second. Then uh, you've got Taffy Wright playing right field. 
Rudy York playing first base, batting cleanup. Hodgin playing left field. Holloway at second. Uh, Baker at third base. And that would be, let's see, Floyd Baker, the third baseman, a really excellent defensive third baseman, batting um, seventh. Batting eighth is Mike Tresh, the catcher, and then Fred Papish will uh, bat in the last spot for the White Sox. So Dave Philly is up. And that is a 4-8, which is a triple, one to two, or a double, and it turns out to be a double. So Dave Philly leads off with a double for the White Sox. And Luke Appling is going to follow him. Luke Appling in 1947 hit 306 with eight home runs. And that is a 410, and that is going to be a fly ball to center. So it's one away, and Taffy Wright is up. Taffy Wright, not, um, he hit 324 for the, the uh, White Sox with four home runs. And he gets a 3-7, which is a walk. So they have two men aboard. Two men on with only one out and Rudy York up. Rudy York, um, good power hitter, not a good uh, batting average though. He gets a 6-6, six, six, and that is going to be a fly ball to center field. He is out. And Hodgkin, or ha Hodge, Hodgin, I don't know how you pronounce that. 4-6 is a walk, and that loads up the bases. So Hodgkin gets a walk, and the bases are loaded for the White Sox with Callaway at the plate. And that is a 3-8, and that is going to be a ground ball to the shortstop, and he is out. So both teams threaten in the first inning, in their first innings, but both teams come away with nothing. We go to the top of the second with Cookie Roja up at the plate. And he gets a 1-4, which is a pop out to third base, one away. That brings Ed Kirkpatrick, the catcher, up. He gets a 3-4, which is a ground ball to second. That's two outs. Of course, neither of these teams was really very good. So, uh, Freddie Patek is up. And he gets a 4-4. And that is going to be a fly ball to center field. So, Freddie Patek is out. And the... Royals go one, two, three in the second. We go to the bottom of the second inning. Floyd Baker is up for the White Sox to lead off their second. That is a three, eight. That's going to be a triple one to two, and it is actually a single. So he, he gets a single, and again, for the second uh Inning in a row, the White Sox lead off with a uh, with a base hit. Mike Tresh is up. He gets a 6-6. Six, six. That is a fly ball to center field. So that's one out. And that brings up the pitcher, Papish. Uh-oh. So let's see. That is a 1-7. That's a strikeout. The White Sox have two down and a man at first, and back to the top of the order with Dave Philly. And he gets a 111, which is a ground ball second base, and he is out. So the White Sox come away with nothing, and we go to the top of the third. Top of the third, they will have the uh, Royals will have Dick Drago leading it off in their third. He gets a 2-7, which is a strikeout. Up steps Amos Otis. He gets a 310, which is a line out to third base. And that brings up Lou, sweet Lou Pinella, manager, 
to go on to become the manager of the Yankees, the Reds, and the Seattle Mariners. He gets a 1-8, and that's a single. So Pinello's aboard with a hit. And Richie Shinebloom is up. And he gets a 6-11. And 6-11 is a fly ball to the right fielder. Probably a 4 because these teams had terrible defense. Um... And he is, and that is a seven, so that may still be an out, and it is. So the Royals get nothing in the third. We go to the bottom of the third. The bottom of the third is going to be led off by the White Sox, Luke Appling, their shortstop. He gets a one seven, and that is a walk. So the White Sox have led off every inning so far by getting the first man on base. But they have been unable to capitalize on any of those so far. Taffy Wright is up. And let's see, let's roll this again. That is a 5-5 five, five, and that is a strikeout. So Taffy Wright strikes out after Appling worked his way aboard with a walk. Rudy York is up. That is a 5-8. That's going to be a fly ball to left, so that's two away. And that brings Ralph Hodgson up, and he gets a 5-12, and that is a ground ball to the pitcher, and he is out. So the White Sox get nothing in the third. We go to the top of the fourth. In a scoreless game between the 1972 Royals and the 1947 Chicago White Sox. John Mayberry is up for the Royals. He gets a 4-9 and that is a triple 1-4 double and it is a triple. So uh, John Mayberry leads off with a triple. You got to think that they're going to score here. The White Sox will not bring the infield in. I don't like bringing the infield in, and I think it's a little too early to do that anyway. And you have to get a run to win the game anyhow. Carl Taylor gets a 2-3. That's a pop out to third. One away. So with one down, Cookie Roja is up. He gets a 6-10. 6-10 is a fly ball to center. The center fielder is Dave Philly. He's a two. That's a 17. And that is an out one. Runners advance one base. So that does score the run. Um, so Roja, fielder's choice, and the run comes home. Or really fly ball. Fly out, um, sacrifice fly. And uh, Ed Kirkpatrick is up with nobody on and two down, and that's a 6-9, which is a single. Kirkpatrick is aboard with a hit. And up steps Freddie Patek. Freddie, Freddie Patek has a strikeout. So the Royals do strike for one. In the top of the fourth, we go to the bottom of the fourth inning with the uh, 72 Royals on top of the 47 White Sox by the score of one nothing with Don Colloway up for the White Sox. He gets a 2-8, that's a single. And again, we lead off, the White Sox lead off with the first man of the inning getting aboard and yet it has yielded them nothing so far. Floyd Baker gets a 2-6 and added the ground ball double play and that's that erases two right there. And up steps Mike Trash. And you got a 2 6, and that is a ground ball to the shortstop, and he is out. So no runs come in for the White Sox. We go to the top of the fifth inning. Um, the leadoff hitter for Kansas City will be Dick Drago, the starting pitcher, who is pitching quite well, and he gets a 5 7 which is a pop out to first base, one away. And that brings up Amos Otis. 
Amos Otis gets a 4-9. That is a triple one to four. It is, in fact, a double. So Amos Otis gets a double, and they have a man at second with one down and Lou Pinella up. And Lou Pinella gets a 2-7, which is a ground ball third base. He's out. And it's all up to Shine Bloom to keep the inning going. And he gets a 6-8, and he gets a single one eight, and it is a single, but it's only a one advance base. So they have runners at the corners with John Mayberry up. John Mayberry scored the Royals' only run after he had a leadoff triple, and that's a 4-9, and that is a triple 1-4. to four. It is actually a double, but it does score another run. And Mayberry has really been a thorn in the side here. As the Royals get their second run, the runners will hold, and Carl Taylor and Carl Taylor being a good hitter, that's a single one to eight, and it is actually a line out to shortstop. So they did get the additional, they tacked on an additional run, and the Royals now have a two to nothing lead. With the White Sox coming up, and their pitcher, um, Fred Papish, they're gonna let him hit, it's only two nothing. It isn't really, um, we're not at critical mass just yet. And that is a 2-9, which is going to be a uh, ground ball A, and that is the first time that the, and then it's a ground ball to first base. That's the first time the White Sox have failed to get the leadoff man aboard. And it's the fifth inning. Uh, Dave Philly is up with one down. And that is a 5-10. 510 on Drago's card is a ground ball to the shortstop. The shortstop is Freddie Patek, and he's a two. That is a four, probably is an out, but we will check it for sanity purposes. And it is. So Philly is out, and that brings Luke Appling to the plate. And that is a 610, and that is a fly ball to center. That is would be Amos Otis and he is a one out there and so that is an out and no runs come across for the White Sox in the fifth we go to the top of the sixth so far the weather has been cooperating there isn't a lot of wind out here Cookie Roja is the batter in the sixth he gets a three six which is a walk So Roja is aboard, and Ed Kirkpatrick is up, no outs. That's a 6-8, that's not going to be good, that's a single 1-8, but no, he just misses it. It is actually a line out to shortstop, one away. One down, and Freddie Patek is up. And that is a 4-5, and that is going to be a fly ball to right field. One of the things that uh, Papish is benefiting from is that this Kansas City lineup isn't really a, a, a crack A number one lineup, but Drago is up. You know they're going to let him hit because he is pitching great and he grounds out to third base. We go to the bottom of the sixth. It's 2-0. 1972 Royals leading the 1947 White Sox with Taffy Wright up for the White Sox. Got to get something going here. 5 9, that is a strikeout. So Taffy Wright has uh, not got that on his, on his mind as he strikes out. And that brings Rudy York up. Power hitting Rudy York had 21 home runs, and that is a fly ball. So that's two out. Now the breeze is kicking up a little bit. Got to be a little mindful of that. And Ralph Hodge is up. And he gets a 1-8, which is a ground ball to the first baseman. So, no runs come across for the White Sox. In the sixth, we go to the top of the seventh inning. Top of the seventh, Amos Otis up. He gets a 6-6. That is a strikeout. One away. Up. 
Up steps Sweet Lou, Lou Pinnell. He gets a 6-5. That is a ground ball to second base, two away. And Richie Shinebloom is up. And he gets a 3-5, and that is going to be a ground ball to the second baseman. And no runs come in for Kansas City there. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Still 2-0, 1972 Royals over the 1947 White Sox. With Don Colloway. He gets a 5-7, and that is a pop-out to third. Drago has just been a tough customer, really, this, uh, this game. Um, and Floyd Baker is up. Floyd Baker gets a 6-7. That is a single one to 19, and that is indeed a single. Baker aboard with a hit, and Mike Tresh is up. He gets a 4-8, and uh, that is a triple one to two or a double, and it is a double. And now with the pitcher up, they are going to actually pinch hit for Papish. It is that time right now. So let's see who the pinch hitter is going to be. The pinch hitter will be Thurman Tucker, so we'll write him in. Thurman Tucker bang against uh, Drago with runners at second and third, and one down. And he gets a 6-7, and that is a single one to 19, and it drives in a run. And now the um, White Sox are only down by a run. They are going to hold the runner because there's only one out. And that brings Dave Philly to the plate with only one out. And let me mark down that that was a run. And that's a 6-10, and that is a fly ball to center. He is a 1, and that is a 10 on the reading on the uh, split deck. And that is an out 5, runner on third scores. So that is a tie game right there. And uh, other runner holds, so there's a runner at first with two down and Luke Appling up. And that is a 6-7, and that is a single one to 19. That single one to 19 has been coming up quite a bit now lately. And now the White Sox have runners at first and second with uh, two down and Taffy Wright, the batter. And he gets a 3-4, and that is a ground ball, pitcher A, and he is out. But the White Sox tied the game in the bottom of the seventh, and it is now 2-2. And the new pitcher for the White Sox is now going to be uh, Johnny Rigney. So Rigney comes in. Papish goes seven innings, and he actually pitched rather well. He only allowed two runs, and John Mayberry will be facing him to lead off the eighth inning. And that is a 6-6, six, six, and that's going to be a pop-out to second. One down. Carl Taylor up. That is a 4-4. Four, four. That is a fly ball to center field. That's two away. And finally, Cookie Roja. Whoa. Let's see. Don't want that to get away. That is a 4-12, and that's going to be a walk. So Cookie Roja walks. 
that leads to Ed Kirkpatrick being up, and he gets 3 8. And that's a single one asterisk, so they've got runners. They got a little something going here. Runners at first and second with two down, though. And Freddie Patek up. And he gets a 1 6, which is a pop out to second. So, no runs come in for the Royals in the eighth. We go to the bottom of the eighth. And they're going to stick with Drago. I mean, he's pitched well. He's only allowed two runs. And he's up to lead off the next inning. So, they probably don't want him. They probably don't want to take him out just yet. Rudy York is up. And really, we've only gotten two runs off of him. So, here we are at the bottom of the eighth. And that is a 312, which is a ground ball to the shortstop, one away. Up steps Ralph Hodgson. He gets a 4-7. Four, 4-7 seven. Four, seven is a ground ball to the second baseman. The second baseman for the Royals is Roja, and he's a 2, and that is a 3. Let's see if that's something. No, it is not, and uh, Holloway is up. So Don Ho Holloway, not Holloway, is up, and he gets a 6-11. And that is a fly ball to the right fielder. And the right fielder for the Royals is Shinebloom, and he's a 4, and that's a 3. That's going to be something. 3 and 4, that. No, it isn't. It's an out. So Holloway is out. We go to the top of the ninth in a tie game, all tied at two. And they will pinch hit for Dick Drago as he leads off for the Royals right here. And the pinch hitter will be Bobby Knopp. So we will write him in. Wind picking up a little bit. Bit of a concern. That is a 5-12. And that's a pop out to short. One away. So that brings up the top of the order for Kansas City and Amos Otis. Amos Otis gets a 4-9, and that is a walk. Lou Pinella up. That is a 2-10. That's a pop-out to short. That's two down. And that brings up Richie Scheinman. You get the 3-5, that's a ground ball to the second baseman, and he is out. So the Royals get nothing in the ninth. If the White Sox can get a run right here, they win the game. Floyd Baker is leading off, and it is not Dick Drago anymore that is pitching. It is, in fact, going to be Ted Abernathy. Ted Abernathy is is out there on the mound. In 1972, Ted Abernathy was 3-4 and four with a 170 earned run average. He faces Floyd Baker. And that is 4-10, which is a ground ball to the third baseman for the Royals. And that is uh, Taylor, and he is a 4. That's a 17 and a 4 at third base, which is an out. 
one away. Floyd Baker gone. Um, that brings Mike Trash up. And he gets a 5-6. And that is a ground ball to the second baseman. He is a 2. That is a 1. That's going to be a single. So Trash gets a single. And that brings up the pitcher's spot. And the pitcher is... I, I'm going to say he's going to hit. I'm going to let him hit because Rigney is too good to... Uh, and he was a pitcher, he was a uh, starter reliever, so he's got another inning or two he could pitch. I'm going to let him hit. And we're going to hope for Ted Abernathy's card, although Ted Abernathy pitched well, so who knows. But that's a 6-12, and that is a line out to shortstop. So it's two away, and it would have been an out anyway. And uh, that was Rigney. lined out in the ninth. I have an unorthodox way of managing. Yes, I do. Man at first, two down, Dave Philly up. Dave Philly gets a 6-2. That is a ground ball to the second baseman, and he is a 2, and that is a 9, and a 2 at second base, and that is going to be an out, and the uh, White Sox are out of the inning. We go to the top of the 10th. And John Mayberry will be batting for the Royals against uh, Rigney, who I kept out there purposely. And he gets a 1-5, which is a fly ball to center field. So May Mayberry flies out, one down. Brings up Carl Taylor. He gets a 2-5, that is a ground ball to the shortstop. He is out. And that brings up Cookie Roja. And Cookie Roja gets a 1-7, and that's a fly to left. So there are, uh, there's no runs coming across for the Royals. There in the 10th, we go to the bottom of the 10th with Luke Appling. And he is going to still be batting against Abernathy. Abernathy pitched 58 innings in 1972, was a big reliever for them. Got to think he can go at least this. 5-7, that's a triple 1-2 single, that is a single. So Appling leads off with a single. They really need to try to convert this and win the game, is really what they need to do. Taffy Wright is up, he's a very good hitter, I'm going to let him hit. That is a 6-12 though, and that is a line out to short, one away. One down, Rudy York at the plate. He gets a 5-5. That is a ground to the shortstop. And the shortstop for the Royals was Patek, and he's a 2. That's an 8 and a 2. 8 and a 2 might be a double play, and it is. And so nothing comes across for the White Sox in the 10th. We go to the top of the 11th. And Ed Kirkpatrick is up for the White Sox, or for the uh, Royals in the top of the 11th. And Rigney is still out there. We're going to keep him out there. 2-8. That's a home run, 1-12, and it is a double. So Kirkpatrick, is that Kirkpatrick? Yeah, he leads off with a double. And Patek is going to sacrifice him over. Or try to sacrifice him over. And that is a 7, and it works. So he goes over to third. Now the infield has to come in for the White Sox. With the pitcher up. And he might as well. He, we're going to do a. They're going to do a. Uh, they're going to do a squeeze play, with. Uh, with Abernathy up, because really none of the guys on this team are really good hitters. That's a seven on the squeeze. Batter pops out, runners hold. So is that the first out? Yeah, that's the first out. So that was Abernathy. One down, and Bobby Knopf up, infield still in for the White Sox. 
and that is a 17 and that's a walk so now we're going to take a little bit of a gamble um Wait a minute, that wasn't Bobby Knopp, that was, uh, that was Amos Otis. Bobby Knopp was a pinch hitter at a previous time. Um, so what was that, 1-7? That is a fly ball B. So actually that scores, that scores the run. So Amos Otis gets, knocks in the go-ahead run. And Lou Pinella is now up. There is two out, um, but Kansas City has a lead, and that's a 1-8, that's a single, so Pinella has a hit. And Shinebloom is up. And he gets a 1-4, which is the ground ball first base A, and that is the inning for them. But the... Royals score the go-ahead run in the top of the 11th inning, and so we're in the bottom of the 11th. Abernathy's still out there because he was a big uh, pitcher for them in 1972. Ralph Hodgden, Hodgen is the batter. He gets a 2-11, which is a line out to first. And Don Colloway is up. He gets a 4-2. That is a pop-out to shortstop. And finally, that brings up Floyd Baker. Let's hope it's not final. That is a 6-8. And it is a walk. So he gets a board. He keeps the inning going. For Mike Tresh. Mike Tresh gets a 6-6. That's a double one or a fly ball. And it is a fly ball to the uh, center fielder and that is the game with the final score being the 1972 Royals beating the 1947 White Sox by the score of three to two and that will be it for me Sportsman Z Bob Zolke from my backyard signing off